All right, fighthype.com here with the Bronze Bomber, the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, one of the great punchers in our sports history, my man Deontay Wilder coming back in Brooklyn, a place that loves him, the Barclays Center, October 15th against Robert Hellenius. Deontay, I know a lot of people want to talk to you, so let's get right to the good stuff, man. Um, Robert, he says that when you were sparring with him, getting ready in camps, you didn't see the full in the real Robert Hellenius because he was – he was trying to emulate your opponents, a Tyson Fury, other guys. And then on the other side, yourself, I, I know sometimes you're working with guys in sparring, but I also know guys go home on stretchers from your camp from sparring with you. Did he get the full brunt of Deontay Wilder in sparring, or are both fighters getting something new? Or do you do do you think you know exactly what you're getting based off the sparring October 15th? Um, you know, uh with I agree with Robert, you know, he was, you know, emulating another character and trying to get me right in the same sense of, you know, you got to do, sometimes you switch into what you know as well when things ain't going right for you as well. So I think you get half of what you, you're trying to accomplish in camp by uh, emulating the other fighter, but also you get half of yourself as well. You know, which we're both going to bring different things. You know, I love Robert. Um, he's definitely been my sparring partner for a long time. And um, and he got a heart of a warrior. You know, um, I have nothing but great things to say about Robert. I'm training very hard for Robert. I know Robert is on a mission and he's so close to becoming a champion, you know. Um, and he's not going to let nothing stop him from getting in his way of accomplishing that accomplishing that and I understand so he doesn't have to remind me of him emulating and that's not the real him I you know I know he's coming with the heat so I don't need to know that Robert <laughs> I'm not taking you lightly brother and um it's gonna be an amazing fight you know I love when I can truly respect a man for him being him and going through the the through the the training that he the fighter honestly and not have the need nothing to advance him to surpass certain things that are not humanly possible for the body to do and things like that. He's an honest guy and uh, he works hard, him and um his trainer as well. So uh Johan. So you know it's gonna be a pleasure pleasure October the 15th to get in the ring with him and uh and we both fight our hearts out because we're both putting our hearts on the line, you know. Deontay, you said, you, you mentioned just now, you expect him to come and bring the heat. And mm -hmm. it looks like you rubbed off on him. He, we saw a meaner, more aggressive Robert Hellenius in those two Kanaski fights. But, yeah. but against you, it's, it's, it's not a shorter guy like it was Kanaski. He says he needs to be even more aggressive for this fight. Do you think he'll be able to do so? And if he tries to fight that way, does the fight end in the first half? Does it end maybe early, him trying to do that? Well, he got to understand that, of course, he's he's going to get himself in, in into a different territory with me. And um, and it's going to be vice versa. So it's going to be like we know each other, but we get in a certain – if the fight go at a certain speed or be so aggressive, then we're going to get into territories we never faced before with each other which it makes a great fight when that happens. But the thing about it, he don't know what I'm capable of doing or going to do at that time and moment. I'm not going to be able, I'm not going to uh, be able to know what he's going to be doing and thinking in that time. So uh, all the way around, no matter how we put it, we lay these cards, it's going to be a hell of a fight, you know, in my opinion, until, until it's over, until somebody get clipped and, and it goes down. I don't, I don't see this fight going all around. I don't see no fight with me going all around because I know what I'm capable of doing and others know as well. And um, I'm just blessed with the power. Robert knows it as well, you know, and then the only difference that's going to be in the ring, we're talking about territory, going in different territories, is that he's never felt my power in 10 ounce gloves. It's always been 18s and 20s. They so, seem to not let go of their hands the way they planned on doing it once they get in the ring with you because of that power and, and the length. Right. Oh, yeah. 
Right, right. Nor have I felt him mention those gloves, but it's going to be different. You know, I'm known for my power, so, and it's a real thing. I, I re have real power. <laughs> and, you know, power don't ever fade. You can be 100 years old and still, and still have that power, you know. So um, it's going to be a real exciting fight, and I'm looking forward to coming to the Barclay Center with some of my most, you know, electrifying fights, my most memorable and uh, fights and um, so great place, great fighter, great fight, and um, I couldn't ask for nothing else. You know, Fox pay per view, it's gonna be great. Gotta ask you, man. Um, after the fight, there was this last Ruiz Ortiz fight. There was a video uh, on the site that did like a million views and went viral. It was you and King, you coming up to Ortiz after the fight, and you kind of you picked him up. You picked him and his children and his family up. Um, is that stuff really important to you, to Deontay? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, D. There you go. You had cut out a little bit. Oh, oh, so after the Ortiz fight, there was this video that, that went viral. You comforted him, and you picked his children up. Um, yeah. Is that kind of stuff important to you with, with your opponent and, and, you know, Ortiz and all that? I mean, man, Ortiz, we just built a bond. Like, like I love, I love, I love... Man, my heart just, ah, man. I love being able to put another fighter in position, you know, to win, to to to, to support, support their family. You know, with Ortiz, it was a special situation for, for, for me with him because I looked at another man that was from a, another country than I, you know, but just wanted to provide for his family, specifically for his, his daughter that was, you know, born with a disorder which I can relate because my daughter was born with spina bifida. So, and that's solely the reason I got into boxing to make a better life for her and to provide for her. I told her that I would be a champion that when she was two years old, I looked in her eyes as comforting her. And I said that that would be a world champion. I'll be able to support you beyond your belief. And um, boy, did I do that, you know, and I see another man, a great fighter, a unique fighter, a dangerous fighter, and just want to survive. You know, he traveled, he defected from his country, then traveled the, the the wide ocean, so many dangerous things that could have gotten him just for his family, for his daughter, and he got here. And now he's just trying to make a, a, a way, a life for his family, the best way that he know how. And nobody wants to give him the opportunity. Nobody wants to give him the chance because of how dangerous he is. He is. He had an opportunity to fight for a title, a mandatory position, but they dismissed him by promising him this and that, and then when they come around, they didn't fulfill their promise. All this and to the point where I had to take up on someone else mandatory because I saw this man and people kept dodging him, talking about his age and how, oh, he's too old, isn't it? But this is the business of boxing. This is the hurt business. The saying is, if he old, then whip his old ass. Get him out of there. In no business, i never known that it has an age limit to business. That's you understand true. me? That's true. Age limit. I know, you know, I, I know a two-year-old that got a business mindset that you already know what their career going to look like. Three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, you know? Yeah. So... Business is business, and in this business that we're in, the hurt business, it's no such thing as age because he wouldn't be in it if he can go whoop his ass and get him on out of there then. You have him go sell a seat. But we in it to feed our families because we all know that this is not a business that where you get a, you know, somebody coming in this business with a silver spoon. They doing exhibitions. Most time people get in this business from rural areas, places where they – you know, coming out the slums, we need it. That's why a lot of these fighters get taken advantage of because these people think they don't know nothing and they get taken advantage of all the time. That's why they sign in horrible deals with promoters and managers and stuff and they robbing them when we risk our lives. And then you have promoters say they one promoter is giving too much money to other fighters. How can you put a price on a life? When your ass sitting on the outside of the ring ain't tasting, touching and tasting not one fucking punch, but you collecting all the money. 
but you feeding your family and your grandkids and stuff like that. Why this person have to suffer? And, and he probably ain't even got no medical insurance on them. And the little insurance that you get, you get it just enough so it can fulfill your show. Man, let me stop. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big advocate in this. And as fighters, man, we got to look out to each other. And it's so important. It's so important to look out at each other. And I'm all for that, man. I helped that man. I gave him his first million. And on top of that, had another fight with him to support his family. And that right there, I'll forever, like, oh, uh, man, that we... After that fight, we became like best of friends. Like I love that guy, man, and I have no problem stating I love RT. Do you, do you, you know, do you, and, and that's all genuine and real. Like, I, you know, it was a time where he needed it the most, and I was there for. Him. And that's how I should be. As I look at fighters, we should be there for each other. Let's make this money together. Forget all these middlemen and all these people. They're trying to get rich off of us. We are the product. They can't say a shit without the product. Those posters got fighters on them, not the promoters. Man. Not the come on, man. It's the when yeah. we risking our lives, man. We getting hit in the head, which the head is not meant to be hit, and all in. They barely want to pay the medical bills. Come on, bro. We gotta wake up as fighters, man. But it's you know. You got to want it. You got to educate yourself. You got to want it to have that knowledge. You know, because the only way you become wise is if you apply knowledge to life or you be considered an old fool. And I'm sure we all know many of them. Unfortunately so. But, but <laughs> you no, know, you're right. But <laughs> I got to I got to I got to ask if um, do you ever think like you had with Ortiz, you'll ever have a moment like that with Fury? You know, I like I know Ali and Frazier, they nah. Okay. Never, because I know the truth behind that. I don't, I don't, I don't condone and cheating and shit like that. I know that no matter what people say, it's just like people use, you know, yeah, analysts or whatever. If he, if he did have some in the glove, or if he did say, why did you not go to the authorities? And I wish I was in front of them. I can grab their collar, and I would grab their collar and put them close to my face, so we can be eye to eye, face to face, so much that my breath touched their face. And I would tell him, why the fuck would I go to the authorities when I have an opportunity to release my own energy and put my hands up on him and the possibility of trying to kill him and get paid millions of dollars doing it? I'm gonna go to the authorities. Okay, go to the authorities. They lock him up. Then what's, what's next? That's it. A good write up. Okay, we proved our case. Nobody getting fed. What justice did that have done? That don't make no sense. That that sounds like somebody that don't that's not non computational that don't supposed to be in no combat sports because their mindset ain't ain't set on combat. It's set on being nice. So what's that old theory? Don't even make sense to me. Like why would we do that when we we are in the hurt business? This is what we do. I can hurt you and get paid doing it. That sounds like a sweet deal to me. Well, he. He, I saw him tweet something, post something that looks like Wilder is about to be the number one heavyweight again at WBC. Would you? Does, would that? Does that mean you'd be down to fight a fourth time if it comes to? Uh, most definitely. I mean, as long as whoever in the business. Um, I've had interviews um like this before, um earlier, and you know about fighting different people. And like I said, I'm back. I'm in the division. I'm in the business. And who's here? And they bring a hell of a fight. Let's do it. Like I, ain't, you know, me. I don't. I've never ducked or dodged anyone. I'm. I'm the one that blessed people with all the opportunity. True. You know, even when they're not my mandatory or not in line to fight, but because they're a great fighter, I see the potential and it's gonna be a great fight. I makes it happen. One thing about my team being with Al Heyman, you know, and Shelly. Even with my 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 trainers, Don Don J, Don, you know Joey Malik, all my guys, man, we don't avoid for anyone. We who I want, we gonna get. Al don't hold back his fighters on things. He may give his suggestion on this and that or whatever, but what pretty much who we want, we gonna get. So with that being said, I'm in the business of making money, of course, and I'm in the business of making great fights happen right now. Not waiting, not lingering, not trying to fulfill the pockets of promoters and managers. Well, let's wait. That's now nah, you just want to feed your own pocket. Let these fighters fight right now. Some of them may need the money right now. 
And a lot of the fights don't get made because of, of those reasons. A lot of it ain't got nothing to do with the fighter because a fighter only has so much control, especially if he ain't got his own shit going on. You know? And, and, and that's just, that just what it is. But, you know, <sighs> we fighters got to come together, man. We got to be a little bit more stronger because we are the product. And once you understand that you are the product and can't nothing be sold without you, then as you said, see your true power and potential. But I got something coming, though.